This is a game dev project that I recently completed for a class. The project was to recreate a game called Goblet Gobblers using Python and make it playable at both the command line interface as well as with a proper graphical user interface. Goblet Gobblers is a more advanced version of tic-tac-toe. The victory conditions are the same, get three pieces in a row. But the pieces are of various sizes and larger pieces can be used to cover smaller pieces. This makes the game a lot more interesting to play and to program. The official rules of the game are that each player has six pieces of three different sizes. Two small, two medium, and two large. This wasn't explicitly written in the version of the rules that I read, so I ended up making six unique sizes. I guess I should have paid more attention to the pictures. Anyway, I created a unique version of Goblet Gobblers, and I still contend that it is superior to the traditional version. I started by developing the basic logic of the game, which I put into a file appropriately called logic.py. Then I made a simple game loop that runs in the command prompt to help test the logic. A proper graphical user interface will be added later. The logic file contains a game class that tracks the rules and current state of the game. The game board is initialized as a list of empty lists, which seemed appropriate for this game since each board position can be occupied by multiple pieces. The winning combinations are hard-coded in the game class and checked after each player makes a move. As pieces are placed on the board, they are appended to the list corresponding to their board position. The last piece in the list is considered to be on top, which has important implications for how the game works. Pieces that are not on top are invisible to the player and cannot be moved. There is an update on top method of the game class that is called each turn. It updates the is on top attribute of each piece so that they are handled correctly. The logic file also contains a simple class called gobbler to handle the attributes of the individual pieces. There is a human and bot class, each inheriting from the player class. There are many other methods in the game class that are called in the game loop. You can look through the code on the GitHub repo if you want to learn more. Finally, I added a game stats class in the logic file to track some stats so that they can be displayed at the end of each round. The stats include win count, successful opening moves, and the number of turns of each game played. I built a graphical user interface for the game using OpenCV and Python. OpenCV may not seem like the obvious choice for making a game interface, but I was already familiar with it, and it contains all the basic functions I need, like drawing lines, circles, and adding text. The color scheme is fairly simple, and attempts to replicate the colors of the actual game pieces and board. I got a little fancy and added some drop shadow beneath the pieces as they're picked up, making use of the cv2.addWeighted function. I wrote two separate methods for drawing the board, draw static board and draw dynamic board. The idea here is to have one function that draws the elements of the board that don't often move, such as the board itself and all the stationary pieces on the board. This function is only called when something about the board changes, such as a piece being picked up or placed on the board. Draw dynamic board is called once for every iteration of the game loop. It is responsible for drawing elements of the game that are constantly changing, such as the cursor, the piece that the player has picked up, and the drop shadow. Dividing up the functions in this manner should speed up performance, although I'm not sure how necessary it was in this case, since the game really isn't graphics intensive at all. The final step of this project was to make the game playable in a web browser. For this, I used the popular framework Flask. I created a game board with an HTML table, used some basic CSS to do the styling, and added input fields for players to make their moves. When the game is done, stats display on screen, and the user has the option to start a new game. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you found it useful. If you'd like to see more videos about coding, robotics, and RC planes, please consider subscribing to my channel.